Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome to another webcast of Alexandra Mayers Live. I'm Alexandra Mayers, better known as simply Alex. Um, wow, today the worlds of porn and politics have officially collided, and I couldn't be more excited about it. I mean, I have a feeling that everything else in the sphere of adult entertainment will pale in comparison to the interview that was just released from In Touch Weekly that I am about to share with all of you. Um, I don't wanna preface this with too much, but I do want to say that for the past few years that I have um, independently blogged about the American pornographic industry, I have questioned whether or not, and just being able to have a platform via my YouTube channel, pornusetoday.com, and my Twitter account at Alex Mayer's Life, just to have those platforms that I developed to share the happenings within the adult entertainment industry with all of you. Just having those platforms to share this article with you and this interview with you, it was worth it. It was worth it. So without further ado, I'm going to read this to you. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite beverage. And here we go. This was just released today, January 19th at 11.14 a.m. by In Touch Weekly. I found the link on twitter.com. This interview is titled Stormy Daniels Explosive Full Interview on Donald Trump Affair. Quote, I can perfectly describe his junk, or I'm sorry, I misread that. I can describe his junk perfectly, exclusive interview. So here we go. Porn star Stormy Daniels confirmed she had an affair with Donald Trump in an exclusive 2011 interview with In Touch, five years before she was reportedly paid $130,000 by the president to stay silent about the fling. Here's the full transcript of the interview conducted by former Bauer publishing reporter, Jody Lippe McGraw. Subsequent to the interview, Ms. Daniels took and passed a polygraph test. The account of her affair was corroborated by one of her good friends and supported by her ex-husband, both of whom also passed polygraph tests. This interview has been lightly edited for clarity and style. In Touch asks, when was the first time you met Donald Trump? Stormy responds, it was a charity golf tournament in Lake Tahoe. I guess he was there to play golf and I was there because the company I worked for was doing an appearance in the guest room or in the gift room. The first time I met him was actually out on the course. They brought us out to ride around and he kept looking at me and we were introduced. He was introduced to everybody. He kept looking at me and then we ended up riding to another hole on the same golf cart together. And he's like, I want to come talk to you later. Later, when he was coming to the gift room, he came to talk to me and asked for my number and I gave it to him. Then he asked me if I wanted to have dinner that night. And I was like, yeah, of course. Who would pass up an opportunity to talk to someone so interesting? I wasn't trying to date him or anything like that. In Touch asks, it was more of a business move on your end? Stormy responds, 
Of course, whether you're a fan of his or not, which I never really was, you got to admit he's pretty fascinating. That's one of the best things about my job. I've had the opportunity to really talk to and meet some really fascinating and weird people. So I said, yeah, of course. He invited me. He told me to come up to meet him in his room. He told me his room number and whatnot. I can't remember the room number, but I do know it was the penthouse or at the top of the Haras. In Touch asks, what happened next? Stormy responds. So I went up to the room and I was met outside by his bodyguard, Keith, who I met every time I saw him. Keith was always with him. That's how I got in touch with him. I never had Donald's cell phone number. I always used Keith's. I went up to the room and he said, oh yeah, he's waiting for you inside. I went in and I was all dressed up because I had just assumed that we were going to go to dinner, but he meant to have dinner in his room. Like he wasn't dressed to go out at all, just lounging. I remember taking a jab at him. I remember saying, because he was all sprawled out on the couch, watching television or something. He was wearing pajama pants and I was like, ha, huh, does Mr. Hefner know you stole his outfit? I was actually really mean to him. He got all huffy and tried to play it off and was like, oh, I just thought we could relax here. We ended up having dinner in the room. I cannot remember what we ordered. I remember what I had the second time I had dinner with him, but I can't remember what we had. I know that neither one of us had any alcohol though. I don't drink when I'm working. I barely drink anyway, like ever. Anytime I've been photographed with a glass of champagne in my hand, it's really Red Bull. He didn't have any alcohol either. I've never seen him drink. Maybe he doesn't, I'm not sure. Which is funny because he has a vodka brand. I actually remember saying, aren't you going to drink your vodka at a different party? So yeah, I don't think he drinks. We hung out for a while. We talked. He asked me a lot of questions about my business. You know, the business I work in and how it works and how it functions. All like technical questions. He was very curious. Not necessarily about the sex or anything like that, but business questions. He kept showing me he was on the cover of a magazine that had just come out and it was some sort of money magazine. I wish I could remember which one it was, but he had it in the room and he kept showing it to me. And I was like, dude, I know who you are. He was trying to sell me, I guess. The first time I met him, the first couple of hours, he was very full of himself. Like he was trying to impress me or something. But I do remember he just kept talking about this magazine he was on the cover of, like, look at this magazine. Don't I look great on the cover? In Touch asks, so this is all conversation while you were eating? Stormy responds, yeah, like before, during, and after. We hung out for quite a while, a few hours at least. I remember it was definitely daylight when I went there. It was like early evening. I remember walking from my hotel to his hotel. In Touch asks, and this is the same day, the first time you met? Stormy responds, yeah, it was definitely dark when I left. In Touch asks, and it was only the two of you inside the room? The bodyguard stayed outside? Stormy responds, yeah, no one else ever came in. He stood outside. We were talking about all sorts of things. I remember he asked me like, I got to ask you a question and I don't want you to get offended. And I was like, trust me, you can't. I was expecting some sort of vulgar question and it wasn't. 
it was something about how much money I make off the royalties or something. And then I remember saying to him, okay, well, I have a question for you and it is offensive. And I asked him about his hair. I was like, dude, what's up with that? And he laughed and he said, you know, everybody wants to give me a makeover and I've been offered all this money and all these free treatments. And I was like, what is the deal? Don't you want to upgrade that? Come on, man. He's, he said that he thought if he cut, <laughs> he said that he thought if he cut his hair or changed it, he would lose his power and his wealth. And I laughed hysterically at him. In touch asks, what did he say? Stormy responds. He took it pretty well. He was like, yeah, yeah. My wife even told me my son's hair, like, <laughs> I got to reread this. Stormy responds. He took it pretty well. He was like, yeah, yeah. My wife even did my son's hair like that as a joke. I was like, yeah, speaking of your wife, in touch asks, did he mention her at all? Stormy responds, I mentioned her. I was like, yeah, what about your wife? He goes, oh, don't worry about her. Quickly, quickly change the subject. In touch asks, that's all he said about her? Stormy responds, yep. And then he goes, I might be out of order with the conversation because it was so long ago, but he was like, you know what? You're really smart. You're not dumb. And I was like, thanks. What does that mean? And he goes, you should be on. And I was like, really? No, I don't think so. And he just kept thinking about it. I could see his little wheels turning. He goes, no, it would be really, really good for you. People would think you're just this idiot with blonde hair and big boobs. You would be perfect for it because you're such a smart businesswoman. You write and you direct and you produce and obviously you're hot and you're beautiful. And I was like, well, it's never going to happen. NBC is never going to let a porn star on. And he was like, I can make it happen. And I was like, you can't, I dare you. I was totally egging him on. And that was kind of like the thing he was like, no, we have to work on this for you. And that was sort of what he tried to bait me with for an entire year. He was like, we have got to get together and talk about your appearance on. But he was serious. I think when it hit him in the moment, he was like, yeah, this is gonna be really good. And it could have. Of course, it would have been sensational. He just kept pushing for it, pushing for it. And he was like, would you do it? I was like, you know what? I'm not going to waste my energy on thinking about it. But if you actually have the power to make it happen, then I'll do it. In Touch asks, so this was all during this dinner? Stormy responds, yeah during after yeah it was definitely the biggest longest topic of conversation how he could get me on in touch asks and it was his idea stormy responds oh yeah 100 percent. it didn't even occur to me before honestly i have never watched the show and still haven't watched the show i travel too much to watch a lot of tv i had to use the bathroom and i went to the restroom which was in the bedroom. Like I said, it was a big suite. I described the suite perfectly. When I came out, he was sitting on the bed and he was like, come here. And I was like, ugh, here we go. And we started kissing. I actually don't even know why I did it, but I do remember while we were having sex, I was like, please don't try to pay me. And then I remember thinking, but I bet if he did, it would be a lot. In Touch asks, this is what you were thinking during sex? 
Stormy responds, yeah, isn't that horrible? But I remember thinking, I hope he doesn't think I'm a hooker. Not that I would have anything against hookers. I just personally have never done it. Still, I have no idea why I did it. Honestly, I really don't. Were you attracted to him? In touch asks. Stormy responds, would you be? I was more like fascinated. I was definitely stimulated. We had a really good banter, good conversation for a couple hours. I could tell he was nice, intelligent in conversation. In touch asks, did you think the conversation would have led to what happened? Stormy responds, yeah. In touch asks, going to the bathroom, did you think you were going to come out and encounter that? That he was going to be in bed? No, I just had to pee. So anyway, the sex was, no was nothing crazy. He wasn't like, chain me to the bed or anything. It was one position. I can definitely describe his junk perfectly if I ever have to. He definitely seemed smitten after that. He was like, I want to see you again. When can I see you again? In touch asks, did he initiate or did you? Stormy responds, here's the weird thing. He had one of my DVDs and he asked me to sign it for him and I did. In touch asks, he had it on him? Stormy responds, yeah. I don't know if he sent someone out to get it. I take that back. He probably got it in the gift room. It was probably in one of his gifts, gift bags that he picked up because we were giving them out. I remember it was, and I remember I signed it to him. In touch asks, was that before or after? Stormy responds, after. We were still in the bedroom. We hung out for a little while and he just kept saying, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. I have to see you again. You're amazing. We have to get you on. I ended up leaving. And the next night I saw him again at a party. It was in the downstairs of the hotel I was in. And he was hanging out with Ben Rothlisberger. When I got there, he was already with him. I had Keith, his bodyguard, call me and ask if I was coming. Or I'm sorry, he had Keith, his bodyguard, call me and ask if I was coming. When I got there, I called Keith and he told me where he was sitting and he brought me over. And he was hanging out with Ben for a long time. A couple of other people around, nobody famous, mostly people trying to hang on to them. Ben had just won the Super Bowl that year. Donald excused himself. He had to leave. I don't remember why. And he made Ben promise to take care of me. I stayed there another 15 to 20 minutes and Ben Roslisberger actually walked me up to my room that night because Donald told him to. Yeah, he walked me all the way to my hotel room. In touch asks, after you two slept together, did he say anything like, don't tell anyone or anything along those lines? Stormy responds, no, he didn't seem worried about it. He was kind of arrogant. It did occur to me, that's a really stupid move on your part. And it's not like I went around and told anybody. No one ever really knew. In touch asks, did you use protection? Stormy responds, no. In touch asks, was that a conversation or was it kind of in the moment? Stormy responds, it was kind of in the moment. And I was really kind of upset about it because I am so like careful. The company I work for is condom only. But I remember for a fact that we didn't because I'm allergic to latex and I didn't go up there with condoms on me. 
I know that for a fact because 99% of the men don't carry non-latex condoms on them. So I usually always have one in my backpack, but I thought I was going to dinner, so I only had a tiny little cocktail purse. In Touch asks, was the sex romantic? Stormy responds, it was textbook generic. It wasn't like, oh my God, I love you. He wasn't like Fabio or anything. He was trying to have, he wasn't trying to have like porn sex. In Touch asks, did he say anything to you during? Stormy responds, nothing freaky like, oh yeah, that feels good. That's amazing. You know, it was one position, what you would expect someone his age to do. It wasn't bad. Don't get me wrong. In Touch asks, the next night, Ben walked you to your room. Stormy responds, walk to my room. And then I left the next day. Didn't expect anything. Then sure enough, he called me. He always called me from a blocked number. He gave me, of course I had Keith, his bodyguard's number. He gave me his secretary's number, Rona, which is his direct office line. Anytime I needed to get a hold of him, he always took my call or asked me back within 10 minutes if he was on another call or did I read that right? Anytime I needed to get a hold of him, he always took my call or called me back within 10 minutes if he was on another call or wasn't there. I think she would call him and he would call me back from his cell if he wasn't in his office. The number was always blocked. He called me about every 10 days. He always called me Honey Bunch. He's like, how's it going, Honey Bunch? He always started the conversation off. I think it was always his excuse to call. I just read about you in such and such, and there's a quote about you in a magazine. I turned on my channel in my hotel room and guess whose face popped up? Just any, in any, just like any time he saw or read about me somewhere. I was super busy at the time. I've taken a year off because I had a baby, but I was everywhere at the time. That's when I, that's when I did and was doing red carpets. So there was pictures of me like all the time. That was always sort of his excuse to call. Quote, hey, did you know you were on such and such? We need to get together to talk about your thing. <laughs> In Touch asks, did he promise you that? Stormy responds, yeah, absolutely. He told me that he got a wild card choice that he could push one person through at will. In Touch asks, and he said it was going to be you? Stormy responds, absolutely, 100%, he promised me. And then I was talking about how I was going to be moving to Tampa at the time, and he told me he was going to give me a condo there because they were building a Trump Tower there, which I don't think they ever finished unless they finished it in the last two years since I've moved back from Tampa. I was like, you are not going to give me a condo. Anytime I called, he, he would call. It was funny if like my assistant or boyfriend who is now my ex-husband, he was my boyfriend at the time, was with me. I would always have him on the speakerphone. I mean, it's Donald Trump. In Touch asks, were you with your boyfriend when you slept with Donald Trump? Stormy responds, yeah. In Touch asks, did he know about the situation? Stormy responds, he didn't know that detail, but he knew everything else. He called me all the time. Sometimes he would be in LA and he would call me and be like, hey, can you come meet me? And I wasn't in LA. I traveled a lot. He was like, if you're ever in New York, I ended up being in New York. I was dancing at Gallagher's 2000. He insisted that I come and see him at his office. So me and my assistant went. We went straight up to the office. He saw us right in. 
I've been in his personal office at the top of his tower in Manhattan. In Touch asks, when was this? Stormy responds, it was winter. I would say probably like December, January-ish. I could probably look it up. There's got to be some sort of old press release about me dancing at Gallagher's that winter. I also went up, I also went to his Trump vodka release party. There's pictures of me on the red carpet there at Ledoux in Hollywood. In Touch asks, did he personally invite you? Stormy responds, yes, I think it was in January. I went in and I could only stay like 15 to 20 minutes because I had to catch a flight. But I did the red carpet and I went in and he gave me a hug and a kiss in front of everybody. Keith, once again, took me straight up to the VIP area. He asked me if I could stay, but I couldn't. I really couldn't, I had to go somewhere. He also invited me to the Miss USA pageant. He left tickets for me and my assistant at the will call and we went. I didn't get, I didn't get to really talk to him that much because there were people waiting to talk to him and I didn't want to be that girl. So I waved and said, thank you for the tickets. In Touch asks, during these periods of time when you were invited to these events, in between, was he calling you? Stormy responds, oh yeah, at least three times a month. In Touch asks, was there any mention of hooking up again? Stormy responds, yeah, <laughs> when can I see you? I need to see you again. He never was like, let's F, but come on. In Touch asks, was it insinuated? Stormy responds, oh yeah, I mean, come on. If a guy calls you up and says, when do I get to see you again? I had such a nice time last time. It was so amazing. When can we get together again? What do you think that means? In Touch asks, at these events, was his wife ever there? Stormy responds, I've never seen her. I've never seen her in person ever. Then the next time I saw him was at the end of July and he called me and asked if I could come meet him at the Beverly Hills Hotel. And I went, my boyfriend drove me. Keith came out and met me by my and met me at my truck and walked me in. He had a private bungalow out back, which is cool because I'd never been there and I haven't been there since. They have these like individual cottages there. Cool, they're pretty nice. I went there. We had dinner once again in his room. I had swordfish that time. Once again, no alcohol. The strangest thing about that night, this was the best thing ever. You could see the television from the little dining room table and he was watching Shark Week. And he was watching a special about the USS something and it sank and it was like the worst shark week or the worst shark attack in history. He is obsessed with sharks, terrified of sharks. He was like, I donate to all these charities and I would never donate to any charity that helps sharks. I hope all the sharks die. He was like riveted. He was obsessed. It's so strange, I know. And Touch asks, so it's just you and him in the bungalow? Stormy responds, yeah, but isn't that weird? So strange. We finished dinner and we moved to the sofa so we could get a better view of Shark Week. That's when he broke the news to me that it almost went through, but there's somebody that had a problem and it got vetoed and blah, blah, blah. I was like, I told you, you couldn't make it happen. I was pretty annoyed. He kept rubbing my leg and was like, you know, you're so beautiful. I love your little nose. It's like a little beat. I go, did you say like a beat? Like what the F? I started giving him a hard time about it. And he goes, no, 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 it's majestic. It's a very smart nose, like an eagle. I was like, just keep digging, dude. Keep digging that hole. 
Like I said, we had this banter. I was kind of mean to him. He just kept brushing my hair off my shoulder and kissing on my neck. And he was like, so can you stay? And I was like, no, I gotta go. I left. Keith walked me back to my car. I was in there probably two and a half hours. I left and he kept calling me less and less over the coming months. I do remember it was whatever season Tito Ortiz was on. And I guess Jenna was on one of the episodes just with Tito and he called me and I didn't watch the show. I had no idea that Tito was on it, much less Jenna. I think he was afraid I was going to be pissed. So he called me and was like, did you see Jenna Jameson on my show? I didn't know she was going to be, she was going to go on. That's bullshit. She made a fool of herself, he said. She's a bimbo. You're so much better. I was like, no about it. I just thought it was really funny. Don't care. Totally over it. In touch asks, prior to the Beverly Hills meeting, when you would see him at different events, would he try to hook up with you or did he kiss you? Stormy responds, no, he kissed me like hello at the Trump vodka release party at Ledoux. He would ask, do you have to leave? Can you hang out? In touch asks, he would ask you to stay, but you had to go? Stormy responds, yeah. And then like I said, he called me a few times after that. And it was always like, if you ever need anything, let me know. He told me if I ever needed to get anything, a round of golf at any of his places to call him, I think he would have absolutely done that for me. I don't know anyone who played golf at that time and I don't play golf, so I never called in the favor. In touch asks, did he send you any other presents? Stormy responds, nope, and I never asked. Like I said, he would always call from a blocked number and for the last year and a half, I honestly don't know if he's called me or not because when I got pregnant with my daughter, I completely stopped taking calls that I didn't know. My fans don't know I had a baby. I left LA and lived, at, and lived in Vegas and basically hid out. I just really stopped taking calls from blocked numbers, numbers that I didn't know. I even stopped answering people that I, did, that I didn't know, like other celebrities that I'm friends with that would just want to hang out or go out in Hollywood. In Touch asks, when was that? Stormy responds, about a year and a half ago. In Touch asks, was that your last interaction with him? Stormy responds, yeah. In Touch asks, what was the final conversation? The Jenna Jameson thing? Stormy responds, no, I talked to him after that. It was just, hey, how's it going? It was always a shock to answer a number you expected to be a survey or a bill collector and it's Donald Trump. It's always a blocked number, unknown ID is how it always came up. How's it going, honey bunch? And I was like, oh my God, Donald Trump, Donald Trump is calling me. I just wanted to see what you were doing. I, I, I don't know if he'd be scrolling th through his phone. In Touch asks, the last time you saw him was at the Beverly Hills Hotel? Stormy responds, yeah. In Touch asks, when was your last conversation with him? Stormy responds, I don't have the date. It was about a year and a half ago. It was around the time I was just finishing up the whole Senate thing because he called and was like, hey, I just saw you on CNN or Fox or something. You looked great. I love how you give it to him. In Touch asks, how do you feel about all this? The broken promises, what's your take? Stormy responds, I don't really know. I don't have any animosity or whatever. In Touch asks, do you feel like a fool for believing him about? Stormy responds, no, I wasn't like going around telling everybody, oh my God, I'm going to be on. 
it's not like I brought into it 100%. I was challenging him to make it happen. I figured my shot was 50-50, even though he swore up and down it was really 100. It's not just him. I never really get my hopes up on big stuff like that. And Touch asks, did you tell anyone at the time what had happened? Stormy responds, a couple people, my assistant, my boyfriend, my friend Randy, the owner of the company I work for. They were excited about the prospect of. And Touch asks, would you have a message for him or his wife at all? Stormy responds, I don't know. Karma will always bite you in the ass. And Touch asks, you know he's married, so how do you feel about engaging with someone who is cheating on their wife? Stormy responds, at the time, I didn't think that much about it. But now that I have a baby that's the same age that his was at the time, I'm like, wow, what a... And Touch asks, do you feel bad? If she ever confronted you, what would you say? Stormy responds, yeah, I feel bad. It didn't occur to me at the time. And Touch asks, why come forward with the story now? Stormy responds, it's not something I did come forward with. My friend called me and was like, hey. So I was having a conversation with somebody and they mentioned, and is it true? And I was like, yeah, well, over a year, I talked to him all the time and she was like, you know, he thinks really lowly of girls who, she said he said some stuff about somebody else. I have no idea who, it was very derogatory and that makes me more mad than anything. And Touch asks, what do you mean? Stormy responds that, you know, it's okay to be friends with someone who works in the adult entertainment business in private, but publicly you're going to bash the industry or people who work in it. It was a story that was off the record. So I don't even know if, you, if you know what I'm talking about, I, I guess some other chick said something and she's not a porn star. She's no one famous. I don't know who she is, and he he like didn't just go, no, that didn't happen. He went on some tirade, how he would never be associated with someone, blah, blah, blah. But clearly, I do a lot more than just pose for. Her. So that just makes me wonder if he was just flat out lying the whole time. I don't have any unrealistic expectations of actually being on the show. I figured my chances were 50-50, so I did believe that he was shy. So now I wonder if the whole thing was just a effing lie. In Touch asks, just to impress you, to try to sleep with you? Stormy responds, yeah, and I guess it worked. In Touch asks, is there anything else you wanted to add? Stormy responds, I don't think so. Like I said, if I was his wife and I found out that my husband stuck his D in a hundred girls, I would be less mad about that than the fact that he went to dinner and had like this ongoing relationship. In Touch asks that it was an ongoing thing, not just a one night thing. Stormy responds, right. In Touch asks, and he never mentioned her at all. Stormy responds, no, and Touch asks. And he didn't make it seem like she was okay with it. He just said, don't worry about it. Stormy responds, yep. He bragged about his daughter quite a bit though. He was very proud of her, which is nice. He told me once that I was someone to be reckoned with, beautiful and smart, just like his daughter. She is smart and beautiful. So I guess that's a compliment. But as far as family, that's all he ever said. He definitely is very proud of her, as he should be. In Touch asks, did he mention sleeping with anyone else? 
Stormy responds, no. And Touch asks, what are you up to in terms of your career? Stormy responds, I'm doing great. I just had a baby. The whole time I was pregnant, I continued writing and directing. I directed all last year, still directing for Wicked. I have an indefinite contract with them. It's going really well. We just started a new line called Wicked Passions. I'm sort of the director for that. I go back to shooting next month, same thing. Everything's doing really well. No one even knows I was gone. I timed it perfectly. I did two years movie, two years of movies in one year. So the company I work for could keep releasing my movies on a regular basis. So there wasn't like a gap. And Touch asked, if you were approached with the opportunity now, would you take it? Stormy responds, I would have to think about it just because now that I have a daughter, I don't know if I'd want to be in New York. You know what I mean? But in the end, yes, probably. I'd figure out a way to make it work. And Touch asks, if he pursued you again, or if you ran into him, would he sleep with him again? Stormy responds, no. And Touch asks, why? Stormy re responds, because I'm with someone new, because I'm with someone now that I feel differently about. So yeah, um, for those of you who want to read this for yourself, you can check it out on www.intouchweekly.com. And if you want to check out the latest adult industry news headlines, make sure that you visit pornewstoday.com where you can see the latest headlines from someone who I like to lovingly refer to as Stalker Sean, AKA TRPWL. I have his Twitter feed embedded on that website. And uh, if you wanna know more about me, check out alexandramayerslive.com. Have a good afternoon, everyone. This was uh, quite an interesting week in the adult entertainment blogosphere. Catch you later.